And we're on. Why? 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 Hello, everyone. It's the Why Why Westy from Vienna. I'm here with the man who practically does everything in the European West Coast swing scene. Laszlo Tarkani, right? Tarkani. Tarkani. Yes. Yes. Hi, Laszlo. Hi, How are well. you? Great. Thank you for <laughs> the invitation. It's really nice to be on this growing show. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's really nice to have you here. What got you into West Coast Swing and what do you find attractive about mm -hmm. this dance? Yeah, I started uh, my whole dancing career with, uh, with ballroom dancing and then I got into Boogie Boogie, which was very big in Hungary in the, in the 90s and, uh, and two, 2000s. One of the teacher couples who were who are also one of the most famous, well-known couples uh, all over Europe, Adam and Rita. They, they were Hungarian champions. Adam was a German champion, boogie dancer, and they switched to West Coast Swing. And we were very lucky in Hungary because, because there was a lot of people in Boogie Boogie and Lindy Hop who all knew Adam and Rita. And the first classes were with a big group of people a lot of them from Boogie, a lot of them from Lindy Hop. It was already a good start, like it was attractive from the beginning. Was it easy to move from, to change from uh, Boogie Woogie? The basic rhythm is pretty much the same, so it's, it's walk, walk, triple, triple, but it has some, some differences as well. And because they are so similar, it was in the end a choice between the two. So I was running Boogie Boogie and West Coast Swing parallel for, uh, for some period of time. And then when, uh, when it, they, got, they disturbed each other, then I just uh, stayed with the West Coast Swing. So because they are very similar, it's a, it's a, it's a bit hard to be like very authentic West Coast Swing. But the background definitely helps. And now it definitely uh, colors my dance uh, to have some boogie boogie, lindy hop, and a very little balboa background. Can you describe your path from a baby novice to a well-known all-star? Yeah, sure. So it was um, we were very, very, uh, very lucky in Hungary because Adam and Rita started to organize events right away. First Budapest of mine was maybe 2012 or 13. And I made finals right away. Oh. Like I was novice, okay. So I took it for granted. Later on, it was not always finals. And I realized that, yeah, I have to work here. So my boogie background doesn't do a lot for me. Like it does a lot, but I do have to put my work on. So I think around, from around 2013, I began to travel a bit more as my circumstances have, uh, have allowed me. So I was going to a lot of competitions and it was bit by bit. So basically from novice I had mostly top 10 placements, a lot 5 to 10, and then I was missing I think one or two points, and then I was lucky enough to draw uh, an amazing follower in New Year's Swing Fling 2014, and we won the novice, novice Jack and Jill there to, uh, to a blue song. So in uh, intermediate, I don't remember the stats, but for sure, in advanced, in my first 11 competitions in advanced, I was uh, seven times not even in the final. Hmm. But all the four other times were top three. Ooh, okay. So I what had, changed? I had, yeah, so, yeah, because they were all spotlighted. So I had to work a lot on my basics because I have, I've been told I have a, a, a pretty okay affinity for, uh, for finding musical moments. Which is great if you um, if you are the only person, uh, only couple on the dance floor, because then the musical moments sell your stuff more. But you don't really see the musical moments a lot in a in a heated uh, in an qualifier skate. round. So there is no secret recipe. I just did a lot of events and I danced a lot, and eventually uh, it happened. What's the best tip you can give a beginner Westy? find a great group of people because West Coast Swing is, uh, is amazing but being in the, in the good community, being in a, being in a great uh, group of friends with whom you can share the dancing 
and later on you might find it that you share bits and pieces of struggles because let's face it west coast swing is amazing but it's it's uh it's not uh it's not the easiest social dance my tip would be to really find the teacher that fits your like fits your taste uh, personally and the community and just don't, don't stop so you are known as a traveling teacher who is involved in many european west coast swing communities how is it like to be on the road so often believe me i've been thinking about this before i've seen your question before the interview um it has like everything every coin has its two sides so being able to travel um and like see the world and travel to uh to so many countries and eventually sometimes i get to see the country as well uh it's uh it's great in the beginning it's 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 awesome i was the guy who was mostly at home so you all got to travel it's amazing it's certainly more tiring than not traveling i do sometimes have the feeling of it would be so nice to just stay at home but i never regret when i go anywhere since i'm a i'm a full time teacher this is what makes my living so this is the job i once talked uh talked to a well known uh champion guy and uh, i told him like uh oh, how do you deal with a lot of travels a lot of flights like how do you keep healthy because it it does take off your like life credits of course And he told me some things and he said, "You know, my father had a work had a job in the factory, so this is the job. You will not like all parts of it. But it's overall it's uh it's great. Now I'm in the period of my life when it's like no problem. We'll see what happens in a couple of years. So for now, it's great. I really like it and I'm learning to uh to cope with uh with the need to be conscious about how you travel, what socks you wear. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it in the in the movie Forrest Gump. Gump always have dry socks with yourself. So my next question is about the community in Bratislava, yeah. which is I think not so well known for most people in Europe. Can you tell a bit about what's going on there? What do you do there? Yeah, so I got involved with with the community in Bratislava. Three, four years ago, maybe I know the organizer, like who started it, Karin from from Bratislava. I know her for years, and she's doing an amazing, persistent job in like pushing the community to to like maintain itself and even to grow. And then Roman came into the into the picture, uh, amazing guy, and they are now driving the Bratislava stuff uh, together. And for now, I get to teach. one one of their weekly classes weekly uh ma- mondays every every month so i'm there once a month i give them like three four hours plus private if uh if they have uh, some requests it's in the capital of slovakia if you're around uh in in uh, like central europe and if you're in budapest or vienna it's pretty close to go there and uh you can always text uh, Karin or Roman for any like actual info or visit their Vesco swing in uh, Bratislava Facebook page and what's your uh, part in the more uh, well established communities in uh, here in Vienna and in Budapest as well yeah. what do you do yeah so let me start with Hungary because obviously it's my uh, it's my home country i was a lot more involved when uh, when i was actively teaching in Budapest which i don't at the moment mm. regarding like ongoing classes Now I give regular and irregular privates. I organize an event in March, West is Spring thing. I'm planning to like return giving workshops with knowledge that I gathered all around Europe in uh, in events from uh, from pros or or give back something that by the years formulated into like my view of West Coast swing inspired by this person that person this leader that follower and regarding vienna i teach here every week every tuesday and it's great i'm really grateful for for roland for organizing all the all the classes and um and for the viennese community for being very very open to my sometimes crazy ideas 
So let's talk a bit about your events, the events that you organize. And if you can tell about your philosophy as a, an event director, that would be mm -hmm. nice as well. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so there are two events that I'm pretty deeply involved in. So the before I mentioned Westy Spring thing, which used to be Swing Heart Spring Weekend that we used to organize together with Andrea. Uh, my former teaching partner. It's in March. It's usually the third weekend. I'm the owner and I'm the, like, the main responsible for all the stuff happening there. I get to work with a great team, so that helps a lot. And this is the case also with the other event I'm involved with. I'm not the owner. I'm mostly like I'm managing stuff. So basically I, I do most of the things that I do for my event, just the financial responsibility is not mine. And that's the Team event with, in uh, Bratislava. That's it. That is in Bratislava. It's uh, it's in the first weekends of uh, of October. And how is it called? Swing Vibes Bratislava. Yeah. And there, the team is wonderful as well. Mostly consisting of uh, of Slovak people and uh, and some Austrians. As we have the like the I don't know like shareholder split with uh, with uh, with Austrian people. I like to create events that I would attend, and I'm really happy that there are so many events here around around Europe that have a lot of variety, and we could just pick stuff. Like we like this thing from this event. We like oh that idea. Oh that is cute. Oh that makes it very uh, very friendly. That makes creates a very cozy atmosphere. So basically what, what I like to have is a great learning experience with kick-ass parties and some competitions because it's a thing nowadays that we have uh, at some events we have, uh, we have WSDC points. So I like to have super amazing quality of teacher staff. The location has to be like super comfortable, bean bags, offering uh, offering drinks or arranging some nice deal with the bar if there is a bar uh, in the in the location where we have the event. But basically, yeah, I like to keep it like the slogan of Westy Spring thing feels like home. Are you looking for a partner to work with? Good question. Spoiler alert. Oh. Maybe <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> a scoop. <laughs> Remember where you first saw it. <laughs> yeah, so so um, so we had to have some negotiations with uh, like to couple up with uh, with an amazing follower. Nice. You'll nice. see in the I don't know follow up episode later <laughs> if it happens. Do you see yourself as a champion in the future? Very good question. I have um, I have some goals as a dancer, so not only as a teacher that I'd like to fulfill, like to have a routine or two or five and to work on my craft and go on with, uh, with teaching here and there, several communities, so like generate value, not only take it from, uh, from the actual champions who are our trainers. If that takes me to champions, great. If not, I will be still super satisfied. Last question. I think that everyone would love oh. to know <laughs> it's the, coming. the story behind the Laszlo thing. So basically, the Laszlo thing is doing push-ups on the dance floor over a follower. Like, <laughs> yes. So this is what happens, yeah. The start, like there are, there are a couple of people who played a big role in uh, making it a, it like a thing. <laughs> First, I really, I really have to apologize, Venke from Norway. I'm sorry again. We had a really bad fall in an intermediate final in 2014 in Helsinki. She fell really badly, and I fell on her. I'm not proud of it, it just happened, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, and to save the situation, I just began to do push-ups. Like we fell, and I began to, like I did three or four push-ups. And then we stood up and we, uh, we danced on. And Piotr from Poland was the videographer there. The following year in Hungarian Open, 
in the Oskate of the Open Strictly, Piotr was crazy enough to, to make a pact with all the couples except for me and my partner. We were also in the final. Piotr just shouted in the middle of the song of, an, of the Oskate, do the last little thing. All the couples went down and began to do the push-ups. <laughs> there were followers in the, in the bottom, leaders doing the push-ups. Then there was Estelle and I think Miguel who did reverse. And there was <laughs> another position. So there were crazy, crazy options there. And it just, it was crazy. And then Piotr with... Uh, I think with Irina Pusanova, with Arno, with Jakub from uh, Brno, with Venke and Marta, they began to produce like instructional videos, like five minutes videos, how to do the last little thing, how to get out of it, how to like, like super fun. I was like, really? So basically, Piotr, thanks, he created uh, the brand. And uh, just, a, just a funny story to, to, to wrap it up. I was at the US Open in 2015 and I was uh, social dancing with, with a follower from Australia. And like, we haven't, we haven't met ever. Like, hey, this is her name. Hi, my name is Laszlo. And she said, that's like that thing. Right? The la last little thing. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. It's uh, really cool that you're doing this show and you introduce people to the world. And thank you very much for introducing me as well to the world. Thank you. And I can definitely recommend Laszlo's, at least the Bratislava event that I've been to. And I heard the Spring Fring is also great. And I can definitely recommend Laszlo as a teacher. He's amazing. In my opinion, one of the best teachers I've ever had. So he's available for privates and workshops, right? People can yeah. invite you to teach workshop in the country. See you next time. <laughs>